I'd like to, again, uh, thank you all for joining us and uh, welcome you to our online investment and development conference for Peterborough. Uh, we're really excited to be sharing the plans um, this morning with you for the eight sites that make up the city centre regeneration uh, master plan for Peterborough, uh, all situated in the city centre. Uh, for those of you who don't me don't know me, sorry, uh, my name is Tom Hennessy. I'm the chief executive of Opportunity Peterborough, uh, the city's economic development company. Uh, we're here to support local businesses to start to grow and flourish in the city, uh, as well as to support investors um, in their efforts to help develop the city as a fantastic place to uh, do business, live uh, and play. Uh, we also work with partners like uh, Peterborough City Council, uh, Cambridgeshire and Peterborough Combined Authority, local and national government bodies in the Department for International Trade uh, to promote the city uh, and attract new businesses here, create new jobs and develop an environment where businesses can thrive. Uh, we see this as a, a great um, privilege uh, to promote this great city as well as a great responsibility. Um, to that end, uh, the site's being brought forward by Peterborough City Council uh, and partners will unlock 600 million pounds of private capital investment into the city and you'll hear more about the specifics during this event. But suffice to say, we are very excited about the opportunities these sites will create for residents and businesses alike. The current climate presents us with a unique opportunity to work with investors, developers and stakeholders to adapt our plans to address the challenges and opportunities of a post COVID world. Uh, while still delivering high quality residential and commercial spaces. In that vein, uh, we've brought together a fantastic lineup of speakers today. I hope you'll agree. Um, first of all, we have the leader of Peterborough City Council, Councillor John Holditch, who will provide a welcome to, for the event. Uh, we have our MPs, uh, Paul Bristow, Member of Parliament for Peterborough, and Shia Leshvara, Member of Parliament for North West Cambridgeshire, uh, whose con constituencies both cover uh, Peterborough. Um, and we have uh, Mayor Palmer from the Cambridge and Peterborough Combined Authority who will be able to provide some additional context on the role that Peterborough will play in the success of the Cambridge and Peterborough re region um, as we're looking at this kind of post-COVID recovery period and far beyond as well. Uh, and finally, you'll hear from Steve Cox, Executive Director for Place and Economy at Peterborough City Council. We'll discuss the vision for these sites and the city as a whole uh, for 2050. Um, and how the council aims to achieve sustainable growth for Peterborough. Uh, as a bit of housekeeping, uh, please do use the Q&A function um, at the bottom of your screen if you'd like to ask a question, uh, and we will pick these up at the end of the event and put them to the speakers at that point. Uh, I'm sure very many of you are uh, familiar with Zoom by now, uh, but as a reminder, if you'd like to switch between our slides on the, on the main screen and the speakers on your own screen, uh, then please do use the switch to gallery view, which should be in the upper left hand corner of the Zoom window. Uh, if you don't see it, just tap on your screen and hopefully it will appear. Um, for now, though, um, I will hand over to Councillor Holditch, OBE, Leader of City Council, uh, to open the event. Thank you much, very much, Councillor Holditch. Councillor Hardwich, I believe you might be on mute at the moment. Okay, good morning, everybody. It feels a bit like Peterborough's dragon den, really, doesn't it? I've been in local government for over 40 years and, and leader of this council since 2015. I can safely say that the plans you'll hear about today are the most ambitious we've ever had for the city since the New Towns Commission in the 60s. Looking to 2050, our vision is to create a city that is a standard bearer for sustainability, low carbon living, and that supports a healthy and diverse lifestyle. We want to provide an attractive places and spaces for our diverse communities that strengthen our arts, our culture, and our leisure scene. These plans will also enhance the city centre's asset from the train station down to the riverfront. We need to continue to encourage entre entrepreneurs, innovation, economic prosperity with proactive support for growing businesses, working with investors and local employers. We aim to develop our workforce so we have skills and talents to support and attract businesses and create a high value of jobs across advanced manufacturing, agri-food, supply chains, logistics, digital and low carbon technologies. These plans build on Peterborough's track record as one of the UK's 
the fastest growing cities. By way of example, our population is now over 200,000, and by 2035, that's expected to grow by another 25,000, a growth rate of 20% higher than the national average. That includes plans for a new university that will open in 2022, which will bring more young people and talent to our city. Uh, over the last century, Peterborough has saw, Peterborough saw the second highest rate of jobs growth in the UK, and, and our enterprise population has seen business startups consistently ranked among the top 20 cities in the UK over the last 10 years. Most recently, according to data from the Centre of Cities, footfall in our city centre began to reach pre-lockdown averages by the end of September, which puts Peterborough well ahead of the average. There are over 7,000 businesses operating here in Peterborough. We are home to huge brands like British Sugar, Caterpillar Perkins, Bauer Media, Amazon, but also proud to our disruptors like BGL Group, founders of the comparethemarket.com and Phototetrix, uh, who, who are cutting edge 3D printers technology and have been even committed to building a 25 million pound 3D printing center of excellence here in Peterborough. It's not just a diverse economy, economy that is making the name for this city, out of physical and digital connectivity are among the best in the UK. P Peterborough has had a diverse economy that makes a name for the city out of physical and digital connectivity in, in UK. Excuse me, it had to be one, doesn't it? Uh, it's not just a, a device, uh, diverse economy, uh, but Peterborough is near the A1, and, and in fact it's on our doorstep, and we'll soon be able to direct to London King's Cross in less than 40 minutes. A great benefit to commuters and shoppers alike. On top of that, the city boasts £30 million full fibre network installed by City Fibre that reaches nearly every home and business. Since we are one of the, we're one of the first gigabyte cities in the UK, when the initial fibre was laid in 2013, Peterborough has become a world-class smart city, where we've been working to track flows and materials and goods and services and people, and the data can improve our residents' quality of life and identify and address emerging challenges across our city. It's even helped us achieve our goals for sustainability. As a council, we have committed to making our own active uh, carbon neutral by 2030. Uh, broader level, we are partnering with the economic development company Opportunity Peterborough to move our economy and businesses away from a take, make, dispose model into a circular economy. In other words, an economy where there is no waste, where there will be less reliance on raw materials and our businesses will be more resilient and profitable and we can operate this in a truly sustainable way. Peterborough is growing fast and we want to remain a city where businesses and residents can realise their ambitions uh, and somewhere where they are proud to call home for decades to come. These plans will unlock even more potential within our city and create refreshments and welcome a refresh, and create a refresh welcome environment where people want to live, uh, visit uh, and indeed work. Thank, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Holditch. Um, if I could ask um, Paul to say a few words now. Well, thank you very much indeed. And uh, it gives me enormous pleasure to talk to all of you about my favourite subjects, um, which is my city, which is Peterborough. Um, I've been asked to talk about government support for regenerating uh, Peterborough, which I will do. But I just want to just talk first a little bit about, I guess, you know, my, about my city and about where I think we should be going. I, I want to articulate, as Councillor Holditch earlier, uh, did earlier, about a vision for Peterborough in 10, 20, 30 years time. The, somebody asked me on a call yesterday with some of the, um, the clergy and, uh, in Peterborough, and they asked me about where I saw my city in Peterborough going. Well, I said that I saw a confident city in the future, 
that understands what it is, who we are and where we're going. One with highly paid jobs in manufacturing, manufacturing, in engineering, in technology and in science that benefits our history as a working city, because Peterborough is a working city, it's always been a working city, and this is what we need to build upon. And these jobs will be powered from a research super hub, which you'll hear probably a lot more about today, which will be located on the university site in our city centre, uniquely in our city centre. We're not doing this on the outskirts of our city like many other places have done. We're doing this in the heart of our city, where there's excellent transport links and road links in and out of Peterborough. And this will then unlock, uh, well, we already have a thriving hospitality and retail sector in Peterborough, but that will, we will build upon that and unlock other parts of our city centre uh, um, through this university with people coming into our city, using our expert, ex excellent public, um, uh, public transport system, but our excellent road links as well. You can drive through Peterborough incredibly, um, incredibly easily, which is unique to many big cities of our size. We, I want to see safe, clean and happy neighbourhoods that surround our city, that provide the workers in those, um, those highly paid jobs, good schools, clean streets, excellent parks and open spaces. Uh, this, is, this is my vision for our city and it builds upon what's, what, what we have, which is our excellent transport links. We're on the A1, one of the main arteries going north and south. We're on the East Coast Main Line, which connects us to London uh, and going um, and going north. And I think we'll look back, we'll look back at this time and we'll turn around and say this was the point that Peterborough uh, realised it could reach its potential. I grew up in Peterborough and the city centre, the centre of our city has been part of my life since I was about five years old. Both my parents worked at the old district hospital, which is the other side of the bridge. And that is uh, of the Crescent Bridge. And that's where I live now you know, in the city centre in West Town. And it's been part of my life since I was five years old when my father used to take me for swimming lessons at the regional pool and then took me into the, the city centre for uh, a, a meal afterwards. But when I walk around our city centre now, I've never been more excited about our potential uh, and our future. And it's not just local politicians like me or like Councillor Holditch or some of the other people on this call who are excited by this, this vision. The government are excited by this vision too, and they've put their money where their mouth is. They've already guaranteed, uh, accelerated 14.6 million pounds for this research super hub located at the university we talked about earlier. And this is just about the highest, highest individual grant that any city has received in the entire country. So the government are putting their money where their mouth is. They've also provided 25 million pounds worth of funding from the, from the town's fund. Um, they've also declared Peterborough a potential spot for a new civil service department. I've asked that question myself in, um, in the House of Commons, and uh, they talked about uh, Peterborough being a, a, an excellent venue for potential civil service relocations as that project um, moves forward. You know, and I, do you know something? And Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister, you know, he, he even goes around when he sees me, he, he, he captures my uh, catchphrase, which is proud of Peterborough. Every time he sees me around the, the chamber, he'll point at me and say proud of Peterborough. And I'm determined, I'm going to determined to try and make him say that in the House of Commons chamber itself, because I think this, this government does see the potential of our city. And as I say, he's putting its money where its mouth is. And whereas many other cities are putting their regeneration potential and, more, and their economic potential and their economic development on the outskirts of their cities. They're doing it uh, because their city centres are clogged, they're congested. Peterborough's is not. Peterborough city centre is uniquely accessible and we're putting that at the heart of what we're doing. And this vision is real. <clears throat> a confident city, a connected city, a working city and a safe, safe clean and happy city. And I hope as many of you get on board and share this vision as pos possible because the future of Peterborough is bright and we need you on board. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much, Paul, for uh, some fantastic words about the city and I couldn't agree more. Absolutely, thank you. Um, if I could welcome Shailesh uh, Vara to say a few words now, thank you. Um, thank you very much, Tom, and a very good morning to everybody, and well done to all of you 
who have uh, taken trouble to organize this event today, which I think is uh, very apt and very necessary. Um, many of you will be concerned about, you know, what Northwest Cambridgeshire actually means, because that's the title of my constituency. So Northwest Cambridgeshire, just to be clear, covers some of the southern parts of Peterborough, Stanground, all the Ortons, Fletton, uh, and then Yaxley and beyond. And I actually cover uh, around 100 or so villages uh, north of Huntingdonshire. Uh, so I actually touch Huntingdonshire. Uh, I actually touch the uh, town of Huntingdon, but that is actually in Jonathan Genomis constituency. So it's about 300 square miles in total uh, and a substantial part of the south of Peterborough. A lot of the sites that we're talking about today uh, are in Port Bristow's uh, constituency, but of course there is a huge impact in terms of uh, what happens in my constituency uh, and a lot of my constituents would actually be uh, working or be affected in some way. Uh, and incidentally, can I just say uh, that Paul has been in Parliament for just under a year now and has done a fantastic job in representing the city and uh, you know has really made his mark. So it, it's, uh, Paul is somebody we ought to be very proud of in speaking up for the city, uh, despite having been in Parliament just uh, for, for a relatively short time. Um, I agree with much of what uh, uh, Paul has said, uh, and uh, it is absolutely vital that we work as a team, which is what is uh, being seen today. We've got opportunity to Peterborough, Peterborough City Council, the two members of Parliament, all the councillors, a whole lot of other bodies as well, and I won't go into naming them all because I'm bound to forget the odd one or two. Uh, and so, uh, you know, this really is teamwork. But what really is significant, and this is what I want to really hone in on in, in my message, is that we have a fantastic story to tell in terms of a track record of achievement. It's not as if we're starting anew. Uh, both uh, Paul and John Holdage uh, mentioned some wonderful facts about the success of Peterborough. And we can build on that, you know, our location. We're about to be 40 miles away from King's Cross by train. We're uh, about, you know, eight, uh, between London and, uh, or we're very close to London and Birmingham. Uh, excellent road links, A1 has been mentioned, but also the A47 and the A14, which has had a massive investment uh, made in recent years uh, to, to improve it. Uh, we are the biggest city in the east of England and certainly one of the most competitive locations in the country. Uh, in terms of the working population, 40% of the population is under 29 and some 62% are working age residents. Uh, of course, we are also a diverse economy, as, as John mentioned. We've got agri-food, uh, advanced manufacturing and materials, digital IT, logistics, warehousing and construction. Uh, and, you know, the Greater Beach Peterborough area is home to over 26,000 businesses. So whilst uh, Peterborough itself may have a smaller number, we've got to think in a big way, and the Greater Peterborough area is significantly more. Um, the other important thing is uh, there's a lot of house building going around uh, in, in the area. And it's not insignificant that that is happening because the housing here is affordable. And a lot of people are moving here because they can afford the housing. And therefore we do need to have the balance of the jobs to go with it, the infrastructure to go with it. And that is important. What I would say to the developers who are watching today is that um, it is important that if we are to be successful, we also have the infrastructure that goes with everything else. That is key. There's no point building a whole lot of houses or a retail park unless people can get to it, there's easy access and there's room for expansion and there isn't going to be anything that's going to cause difficulty to neighbouring areas. Uh, and, and the infrastructure element has got to go hand in hand with the other developments. Um, a number of uh, businesses uh, that have come in, John mentioned some, uh, but again, if I could add to that, Urban, uh, you know, they uh, recently invested here and made European distribution uh, center creating 200 new jobs, little 400 new employees, uh, creating a 70 million regional distribution center. Uh, and this one is interesting, Anker Stoy, uh, specialist joinery coatings manufacturer from the Netherlands. Now they're moving here because they recognize in the post-Brexit world, they still want to have access 
to the UK market. And that's why they're moving here. And that is welcome. It's the first UK base uh, in response to, to uh, the Brexit uh, decision that the people of the country took. And again, um, notable investments over the past two or three years also include uh, Construction Industry Training Board uh, moving its HQ to Fletton Keys. And of course, John also mentioned the BGL group who employs some three and a half thousand people. So this really is a great place to come. And in selling Peterborough, I think we don't in any way have to be shy. We don't have to uh, be timid. We can say we've got a proud record. We've got all these statistics. We've got all these big names. And we shouldn't be uh, reluctant in talking about them because other potential investors are always keen to see, well, who else has been there? Who's got there first? Or they might say, well, if they see something in Peterborough, then maybe I ought to see something as well. So we've got a wonderful track record, especially in the past two uh, decades, all credit to Opportunity Peterborough and the City Council who have driven this in recent years. Uh, and, and I think I, I simply conclude by saying that whilst we're in this difficult period at the moment of the pandemic, uh, it will eventually uh, be dealt with. We will move back to normality. And it is absolutely right that in the meantime, we continue to have this sort of dialogue, this sort of conversation, because when we do get back to normality, we want to be there on the starting line at the front, just above our competitiveness. Thank you very much. Thank you, Shailesh. Um, and some great points in there as well. Um, I think absolutely we're building on a fantastic track record of investment in the city, both from companies coming here, uh, some of whom you've named, as well as um, regeneration and capital investment in some of the projects, such as uh, Flett and Keys, as you can see over my shoulder there. Um, so we, we do have a, a history of delivery um, in this area uh, and fantastic opportunities ahead uh, and also that you know success for Peterborough and success for the city centre of Peterborough uh, isn't constrained uh, the benefits of that isn't constrained to Peterborough or the city centre and um, that the economic benefits of, of job creation etc uh, go far beyond that um, and in that vein uh, very pleased to be able to welcome uh, Mayor James Palmer here from the Cambridge and Peterborough uh, combined authority so over to you Mayor. Well, thank you very much and thank you to uh, our MPs and to Councillor Holditch for the, the fantastic speeches and uh, the huge amount of optimism that is around Peterborough, which is infectious uh, without any shadow of a doubt. Uh, the combined authority was formed uh, by government to uh, double the GBA of Cambridgeshire and Peterborough and solve transport problems and housing problems across the entire area. And uh, clearly we have to look at Peterborough in the context of the rest of the wider uh, economic region and, uh, and the effect of Peterborough on its, uh, on its near neighbours and of course the opportunities that arise from that. We've worked very, very uh, much for the, uh, with the information that we gained from the Cambridgeshire and Peterborough Independent Economic Review, which gave us the evidence base to build on uh, what the uh, desires of Peterborough were and the main desire for the Command Authority was to deliver a university for Peterborough. And, uh, and that's exactly what we've done. But the evidence base allowed us not to build any university, not to copy a university uh, from around the corner, but to build the UK's first independent university, sorry, first uh, a technical university in the UK, a jobs-based, job creation-based university. And I think uh, the vision of the City Council uh, allowing us to build it on the land in the centre of the town, the opportunities that uh, and uh, Paul Bristow mentioned about uh, the extraordinary opportunities that arise now in the centre of the city. Uh, we think that this investment of £35 million uh, can be a catalyst uh, for growth of the wider region, the wider area. And, and I think at this time, there's probably no, no time in history where government and business have been closer for their needs for each other to be successful. It's absolutely key to me that we've got to show uh, as, as government representatives, as local government representatives, that we believe in the future of Peterborough. And it's also important that business comes in on the back of that. And what I see in Peterborough is a perfect storm of business believing in its city. Uh, I'm so excited about the Research and Development Centre that's going to be part of phase two of the university. 
Phase one will break the ground in November. We're aiming to break the ground for phase two in March. This is something that's happening, it's happening now, and business can see it, and business wants to be involved. You've got not only international based uh, uh, companies in Peterborough, you've got extraordinary uh, locally based companies. Uh, Photocentric was mentioned earlier, and I know that they are very keen to put their money where their mouth is uh, when, it's, when it comes to developing the city, and we want to work with them. Uh, to make sure that uh, the opportunities that come in the future are greater than they've ever been before. We are also very, very keen to aid and assist where we can on the redevelopment of the station quarter. And of course, we back the Whitehall relocation opportunity uh, that, uh, that is there for us all to see. So the government talk about levelling up. Uh, we talk about levelling up as well. We talk about levelling up an entire area, and Peterborough is a captain, a catalyst for that levelling up, in my opinion, because the effect of the success of Peterborough, and I genuinely believe that Peterborough is just about to go from into its greatest and most successful period ever, is going to have a massive effect on some of those towns around uh, Peterborough, particularly uh, Fenland towns that are in need of, of assistance and need of levelling up. And the job creation opportunities that are going to flow out of this city because of these investments are absolutely significant. And I truly believe uh, that, uh, that Peterborough is, is, is the place to be for business uh, in, uh, in this part of, of our region. And I think that, uh, and I know, because I'm talking to businesses, part of my job is to do that, that business is very excited about what the university, university is going to offer to them uh, to, to enable them to continue to grow in the future. When it comes to uh, transport, uh, uh, MP Charles Barr obviously mentioned the transport investment of the government and the upgrade of the A14. We are looking, we're working very closely with Councillor Holditch and his team in Peterborough to try and bring Cam Metro all the way through to Peterborough. We think it's just as important to Peterborough as it is in Cambridge. As the city grows, inevitably, uh, the city that we know and love that's easy to drive around may not necessarily be as easy to drive around in the future. And this vision, of course, is a 2050 vision. And we've got to be prepared to do that thing that uh, politicians always talk about, but rarely do, which is putting infrastructure in advance of growth. The one thing that you can guarantee with Peterborough and Peterborough people, Peterborough City Council, is that they understand growth and they understand the need for growth and the opportunities that come beyond it. We want to work alongside uh, uh, the, the MPs and, and, the town, and the city council to provide the right infrastructure to allow the city to grow comfortably as it has done in the past. So again, I, I, I think uh, the links between uh, the wider combined authority looking after uh, one of the most successful regions in the country, the largest payer outside London into the government coffers, some five billion nets per year comes from the Cambridge and Peterborough region. The links between us, between our MPs and government and between uh, the City Council and Peterborough, I think will show great dividends. And I want to impress on the businesses of, of the area. We are here to support you. We have put our money where our mouth is. Government put their money where their mouth is. We want to invest in the area and we don't want to stop. Talk to us, we'll do whatever we can to help. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Mayor Palmer. Um, I'd now like to uh, hand over to our final speaker for the day, Steve Cox, um, Executive Director for Place and uh, Economy at uh, Peterborough City Council, who's going to talk to us in more detail about some of the opportunities uh, that are coming forward with the sites that make up the city centre regeneration framework, as well as some of the other investments uh, and uh, funding opportunities that have been mentioned already by our speakers. Uh, so Steve, if I can hand over to you, please. Thank you. Tom, thanks very much. Um, and there are some slides uh, for, um, for me to follow uh, today. I kind of just start by saying sort of thank you to OP for organising uh, the event today uh, and what an honour it is to follow the four uh, speakers, uh, Councillor Holditch, uh, Paul Bristow, Shailash Fara, and Mayor Palmer, uh, all speaking, I think, uh, with one voice uh, and, and with the shared passion for, for the great city of, of Peterborough. Um, I'll just go through uh, a little bit of context, but also some more detail on, on the opportunities, some of which uh, you, you've heard already, um, as a context, hopefully, for questions um, that will follow. If we go on to the next slide, please. Uh, I, 
think uh, Shailash and others have already uh, pointed to the, uh, the connectivity uh, advantages that we, we share, we have in, in Peterborough, the strategic location um, matched by connectivity, uh, 39 minutes to London on Zuma trains uh, on, on its way very, very quickly. Um, I'd like to think of Peterborough as a gateway to the south, gateway to the east, gateway to the north, gateway to the west. Uh, from Peterborough, you can get to uh, many destinations uh, and some of those are, are listed. I think it's a unique location uh, and one that uh, we are already capitalizing upon, but there's more we can do. Next slide, please. So why now? Um, uh, what, why Peterborough? Well, here's some, I won't go through all of these, these stats, but I, I, think, uh, I think Tom mentioned the 600 million pound city center regeneration program, uh, which, which again, uh, you won't see uh, across many parts of, uh, of the country. Um, and this year alone, in very difficult circumstances, uh, as we all know, investment has continued uh, in Peterborough. We know about the expansions at the Queen Gate, Queensgate uh, Centre, uh, the little distribution centre, £70 million investment there. Uh, the new uh, Hilton Hotel uh, on the um, Fletton Keys uh, has continued this year. Um, we know about the government hub uh, coming on Fletton Keys as well. Uh, and uh, Mayor Palmer has mentioned the University of Peterborough uh, will be on site uh, early in next year. All of these uh, uh, developments, uh, all of this exciting progress uh, is continuing uh, throughout uh, 2020 at a time when it obviously is difficult, but actually uh, I think it's a signal of the, of the confidence that there is not just on the part of uh, those of us in the public sector, but more importantly, uh, perhaps those in the private sector that are committing resources and funding uh, to uh, develop uh, and invest in, in Peterborough. Uh, next slide, please. I think it's really important for, um, uh, for, for the city, for investors to know that we have a, a set of partners in, in Peterborough that know what they want. And I think uh, uh, Paul Bristow mentioned that as a confident city. I think through, uh, through a local plan adopted just over a year ago, um, the time is now, which is our city centre uh, prospectus uh, for uh, how we see the vision uh, for the city. And now the town investment plan, which uh, uh, has uh, been put forward for the new towns fund. Those three documents set out, I think the clarity, the certainty and the confidence uh, that we know where we want to go uh, and what we want to achieve. And I think for, for an investor who is looking to come into to any, any town or city, knowing that you, you have uh, partners locally, the local authority, the MPs, the combined authority and the mayor, all uh, wanting to see growth, all sharing the same ambition, it makes business easier to do with Peterborough, uh, I suspect, than it might uh, be e as easy to do elsewhere. So I think the, uh, the, the context is strong, uh, the direction is, is clear. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, as, a, as a council, I think uh, just picking up on, on our roles, we have various um, uh, roles to play in securing growth. Um, there's a proactive planning authority, um, delivering planning approvals, planning at del delivering planning applications uh, within agreed limits is really important in, in building confidence. Um, we're investing uh, along with uh, Mayor Palmer and the combined authority in the new, new university, uh, a really exciting uh, and uh, development for, for the people of Peterborough as well as the city centre itself. Um, we're enabling growth, uh, so we're working with our partners Hawksworth at uh, North Westgate to support Land Assembly to bring that scheme forward. And through our, uh, our investment um, partnership, through Peterborough Investment Partnership, the deliverer of regeneration as well. So we've got various roles. Uh, I think the you know, investors want to see us committing uh, to, to a vision, but also committing our own resource and time to, to deliver the vision. Next slide, please. Uh, I won't dwell on, on the numbers. You, you've heard a lot uh, already. Uh, there are a few places across the, the country that, that, that have consistently delivered a uh, thousand housing units a year and committing to do the same over the next 20 years. And the, the local plan is setting that out. Um, in housing investment wouldn't happen unless that um, developers were confident that people would buy the houses, people buy the houses because they want to live in Peterborough. It's an affordable place, but it's an attractive place uh, for people to want to, to want to come to. Next slide, please. 
Similarly around jobs growth, uh, the two go hand in hand where there is demand, there is a stimulus for growth, that's jobs, it's homes, uh, it's, it's a, a place that is attractive for connectivity reasons, uh, as well as uh, the quality of the city as a place to live and do business, uh, has seen significant jobs growth uh, take place and, and we've seen references to, to that already in, in the speakers that have uh, contributed. Next slide please. Um, so it is a great place to live uh, and some illustrations here. Uh, for those of you that know it, you'll recognize it. For those that don't, um, you won't get, I don't think, the combination uh, that, that contributes to a quality of, of life that you can, you can achieve uh, by, by living or visiting Peterborough, whether it's the, the retail offer in the city centre, uh, our fantastic green spaces uh, across, across the city, our cathedral, our river, I think the list goes on. Uh, we have all the attributes that you would want. If you were creating a city, uh, as a place to live and invest, I think you you would you could start with Peterborough, and you would probably not go far far away from what we currently have. Next next slide, please. Um, I, I won't dwell on on the number of businesses. Uh, references have been made to the seven thousand uh, across the city and and twenty six thousand further afield. Uh, these are some of them. Uh, uh, that the, there are others, and there are more coming. Obviously, I, I think it's just an indication. It isn't just about the public sector reps saying that Peterborough is a great place. It's businesses putting the money where their mouth is and investing. And they become advocates uh, for and champions for, for Peterborough just by their, by their actions and their investments, but also in the collaboration and the work they do in, uh, in supporting uh, us collectively, working with OP uh, as, our, as our economic development uh, partner. Uh, next next uh, slide, please. A little bit uh, of detail then, uh, if I can, on what's in the, uh, the investment prospectus. And uh, I'll just go around uh, the, uh, the sites here, not, not in huge detail, but certainly to give you a flavour of what the ambition looks like and, and what we're hoping to achieve and planning to achieve uh, through uh, the next 10, 20 years and where the opportunities are, I think, for those who are looking to come into Peterborough uh, to invest. Um, you'll see uh, from, from here that we'll start with the station quarter and, and work our way around. So if I could go to the next slide, uh, please. Um, for, for those that have been uh, to Peter, I think you, you, you will recognise the opportunity that, that there is at, at the station. It's an important, vital gateway into, uh, into the city, 39 minutes to London. Uh, and what we need uh, to do is take the opportunity of the land that's available around uh, to, to, to make the gateway to make the entrance a fantastic uh, uh, gateway to, to the city. Um, we're working very closely with Network Rail, LNER, and with the support of the combined authority to bring forward a £300 million master plan uh, for, for the, the station quarter. Um, we think, uh, and Mayor Palmer has referred to, the opportunity for the uh, government hub to be located, uh, and, and as, as Paul Bristow also said, this is uh, a really uh, uh, great opportunity for, 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 for a government relocation uh, to, uh, to come to the station quarter. Um, the concept scheme is, is still evolving, uh, but I think this is a, this is a tremendous um, uh, opportunity to consolidate uh, and, and bring forward an ambitious scheme in this part of the, the city centre. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, that is the slide with the, with the numbers on it. Um, I think I've said most of the things I want to say, so the next slide, please. Uh, Northwest Gate, uh, you can see is just to the east of, uh, of the station, uh, a long running but really important part of the regeneration story. I'm delighted that uh, just last month we were able to sign a collaboration agreement with Hawksworth, uh, who, uh, who we're working with now to, to, bring, uh, to bring this forward. Um, that, that agreement will see the council, uh, as I pointed earlier, to, to playing an enabling role, bringing forward uh, uh, acquisition of sites to, to, to enable a consolidation of, of ownership that will see uh, a development, 150 million pound mixed use development, close to the station, which, which clearly has, has, its, uh, has its attractiveness uh, for residential, hotel, restaurant and other, other uses. That progress uh, will be made now with uh, Hawksworth over the next 12 months. Uh, and we'll see uh, a scheme come forward that will complement the, the station quarter, uh, complement the Queensgate uh, uh, development uh, and really bring uh, a fantastic boost to, to that part of, of the city centre just, just north of the, of the Queensgate centre. Uh, next slide, please. 
Uh, just moving uh, around to the northeast of the city centre is a, is a further uh, opportunity that's, that's been brought forward. You can see from the illustrations that the, 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 the style and quality of, of what we want to see at Northminster, a uh, former car park that's been demolished, has created a, a fantastic site that we're working with our investment partners, Peterborough Investment Partnership, uh, to, to bring forward. Um, it, it's a really uh, sort of significant location that uh, can act as a catalyst uh, for, for other regeneration around uh, around that part of the uh, of the city centre uh, and we'll kickstart regeneration in, in that location again in a complementary way to to North Westgate and the station quarter uh, and we'll see that come forward over the next two or three years uh, to be a fantastic flagship development uh, one that will set a standard uh, in terms of the quality uh, the quality of design but also the quality of, of housing that can uh, that will be brought forward uh, next slide please next slide please uh, next one, thank you. Uh, Rivergate. So, what, what I think has, has, has come through, and you'll you'll see from uh, you'll have seen from, from from the map, the way the city centre has has now is connecting to the river, uh, and from connecting to the river to, to Fletton Keys, uh, and the opportunity around the Rivergate uh, area is is a significant one within that uh, that 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 area of land. Um, we think there's potential there for, for further housing and uh, and retail development. Uh, to consolidate some of the, the, the improvements that have been made in recent years uh, in that area. Um, as as the, the development of the university and Fletton Keys come forward, uh, it will bring the river to life uh, and connect the river into the city centre. That creates an opportunity at this location, uh, Rivergate, to, to see whether we can consolidate and build upon that, that potential uh, and, and bring, bring a scheme forward. Next slide, please. Um, the, the university, a, a lot has already been said and the university has been a, a lot long awaited um, uh, aspect of, of Peterborough's growth uh, that is now, uh, you know, in a, in, a, in a sort of fantastic sort of concept of, of partnership working and the development itself coming forward uh, with the help of, of the combined authority and, and with the Anglia Ruskin University, uh, which will be on site in, in 2021, uh, building the first phase. Uh, and it doesn't stop uh, there. Uh, the second phase, the uh, innovation ecosystem that, that was described earlier, will 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 consolidate and ensure and embed uh, a, a job-related, sector-related uh, uh, innovation centre that will consolidate the activities of the and build on the the, the activities of the university itself, but also importantly, uh, the businesses across the city. Uh, and there are further phases that will develop out over over the years. Uh, to, to bring what will be, but for a city the size of Peterborough and the growing size of Peterborough, it needs a university of this scale uh, and the one that uh, is, is coming forward is just, just what we need in a key part again, as others have said, of the city centre, uh, not on the outskirts, in the heart of the city, bringing spending power uh, to, to support the, the, uh, uh, the economy of, of the city centre, obviously really important as we go through the next few years. Now, I think the next slide probably has words. If you could go to the next slide, please. Yeah, so thank you. Yes, Embankment and Middle Home. So as we go around the city centre, there's a, a huge opportunity for us to, to look at how we can bring the embankment uh, to life. Um, this is the area alongside the river. The river is a, is a, is a fantastic asset that is perhaps underused. Uh, we need to find ways to of bringing it uh, in, into greater use. Uh, so the, we're working with uh, the university, we're working with Peterborough United uh, Football Club to bring forward a master plan uh, for, that, uh, for that area. Um, uh, part of the Towns Fund bid is looking uh, to, to bring forward a pedestrian bridge that will connect Fenton Keys to the south of the river uh, to, to the embankment to, to the north of the river. Uh, and again, in terms of uh, bringing cohesion to, to the city centre, making sure we've got those pedestrian and cycle links that will uh, connect Fenton Keys to, to the embankment, the university to the city centre, the station quarter to the city centre and the station quarter to the, to the embankment and, and the university are really important in, in ensuring that people can get about the city in, in a way that is sustainable, but also easy uh, and safe. Uh, next uh, slide, please. Fenton Keys, uh, we've heard a lot about, uh, and I think this, as a flagship of what we've delivered, what the city has delivered uh, collectively, it's it's a fantastic scheme on the south bank of the river. There's a really key role for people investment partnership in 
uh, enabling uh, this to happen. Uh, and as we've said, said uh, earlier, the government hub, uh, the relocation of the uh, of, of the DEFRA uh, office to the Royal Payments Agency uh, into uh, Fletton Keys alongside the uh, development of the Hilton Hotel, we'll see the completion of Fletton Keys. Uh, and I think if you want to, to see where, you know, how Peterborough can look going forward into the future, uh, that Fletton Keys is, is a good place to start. Uh, we want more of that uh, and we have more uh, that's going to be coming. Next slide, please. And the next one, thank you. Uh, just just uh, to share with you, uh, and it was alluded to earlier in uh, in the presentation, uh, our ambitions around smart city uh, and becoming a self-sustaining city in terms of energy production. Uh, this is a really exciting scheme that we've uh, secured uh, um, government funding for. That we're working with uh, uh, energy suppliers uh, to bring forward uh, a locally produced energy and heat network. Uh, this will make a huge contribution to our ambitions to be carbon neutral by 2030. Uh, and when we talk about infrastructure to, to enable and support growth, uh, this is a critical part of, of that uh, alongside, as we've, we've spoken about, digital infrastructure and, uh, and transport uh, links uh, of all, of all uh, sorts. Thanks. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the Towns Fund, as uh, I think Claire Paul uh, Bristow was talking about, uh, is uh, uh, again a, a way of delivering on our ambitions and we've worked with the Towns Fund board over the last uh, six months, nine months to uh, submit an investment plan, one of the first cities uh, to submit a plan at the end of uh, July, um, five themes there uh, containing the projects that we are seeking funding for um, are, are set out. Uh, delivering our green city ambitions. Um, I've spoken about the Riverside development, visitor attractions, and, and then supporting the, the skills and enterprise uh, infrastructure. Um, we hope to hear very soon um, on the success of, of the bid, and we've been uh, fortunate to receive some accelerated funding already from the Towns Fund um, uh, banner to, to, to move forward with some improvements to public realm and, and parks across the city. And we're really excited about the, uh, hopefully, a positive announcement as early as as next week that will tell us that, that we've been successful in securing uh, the 25 million uh, towns fund uh, money. Next slide, please. Uh, and then the, the flagship scheme uh, within, uh, within the, the towns fund bid, those of you that know the city will know the former Woolworths building uh, as you uh, go over the, the parkway, uh, go over the Bush Boulevard, um, huge, vast building um, that we, we have plans now to transform uh, into a, a cultural library hub um, with community and commercial space as well. Uh, it will become a flagship building uh, that will be a focus for, 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 for activity in the city centre, um, generating footfall, but also importantly, uh, helping make the connection from the city centre down uh, to, to the river. A really exciting scheme that we're again uh, looking to uh, next week, hopefully to give us a thumbs up uh, as part of the Towns Fund submission. Uh, next slide. Please. So, so they, that, that's uh, that, that's my presentation. Um, I, I think hopefully provides a little bit more detail on on what the opportunities are, uh, the confidence and the certainty, and the commitment of all partners uh, that you've heard today uh, to deliver uh, the growth that uh, Peterborough deserves. Uh, Peterborough has already delivered, uh, and also uh, wants to deliver going forward to make an even better city than it is at the moment. So, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Steve. Uh, uh, a great presentation there, taking us through um, some of the uh, plans for the future of the city, as well as some of the uh, current investment uh, that's already planned. Um, we're going to open up to questions now for the panel. Um, we've already got a few that have come through. Um, <clears throat> so we'll start with some of those. I think someone has asked uh, how many people that we have on, on the uh, uh, the session today, and we've, uh, we're topping out at around 89, 90. We had uh, 120 people or so uh, saying that they'd be joining us today. So um, it's obviously we often expect a little dropout rate, and uh, I don't think we've done too badly there at all. I think that demonstrates the kind of the interest in, um, that there is in what's going on in the city at the moment. And then there's lots to get interested about, as you've heard today. Um, 
we've got a, co uh, a question here from Julia Green. Um, can local businesses and developers get a commitment to engage uh, with regards to available development sites? Too often they are sold to outside funds without an opportunity to bid. Um, I don't know, Steve, do you want to start with that one? Yeah, so thanks, uh, Tom. Thanks, thanks, Julia. I think it's really important that we, we get the best development partners for, for the sites wherever they are in, in the city. Um, and if, if that can be with, with local businesses, then absolutely we want to, to do that. I think the key for us is to continue to communicate what those opportunities are as they come along. Um, and I, I think through, through you, Tom, and, and, and Opportunity Peterborough, through ourselves as the Council of the MPs and the Combined Authority, uh, we'll continue this, this sort of dialogue, the narrative on, on the growth story, um, and make sure uh, through our networks that the local businesses, local developers are, are fully aware of, of what's happening and when it's happening. Uh, and, and yeah, we really look forward to getting into partnerships uh, uh, with local businesses to, to, to deliver with, I'm sure, the shared passion uh, that, that they share for, for the city. Uh, I think uh, that's a, another uh, great opportunity for us. Thank you, Steve. I wonder if any of our other panelists have a view on that question. We have a, a couple around that um, that area. Uh, for example, um, how will you ensure build opportunities are procured with local contractors, etc.? Um, would anyone else like to comment on, on that sort of question? Not a problem. Um, let me see what else we've got here. Um, 2030 to become carbon neutral in terms of energy is quite ambitious. What is the city going to do in terms of electric charging points for electric vehicles, which will become increasingly widespread over the next few years? Councillor Holditch, I don't know, do you want to maybe um, take this one? Right, thank, yes, thank you. Uh, I, I enjoy this. Got, we've got to put in, in the infrastructure to do that, and which we uh, intend to do. Uh, I do know there's a planning application in for a, for a, for a, uh, a particular uh, business to come where they, they, they're needing over 100 points to, to charge their uh, uh, delivery vehicles. So we're, we're on to that. We have uh, quite, quite a few in stock, actually, at the moment, waiting for the infrastructure to be put in. But we'll put the infrastructure in as we go so that we can increase the amount of uh, charging points across, across the city. Because I think, it's, you know, obviously, it's got, it's got to be the future. Thank you. Thank you. Steve, uh, do you have anything further to add on that? Any plans for EV infrastructure? Uh, well, so just, just to just agree with what John was saying, I think it's it's also worth pointing out that per head of population, we already have the highest number of EV charging points in the east of England. So um, we're, we're sort of addressing it, but there's a, there's a lot more to do, as, as Councillor Holditch has said, uh, and getting the infrastructure in place enable the charging points to, to be installed uh, is, is, is top of our list of, of priorities to achieve the 2030 uh, objectives. Fantastic. Um, we can get a few more here. Um, there are some uh, questions here about the presentation being available afterwards and um, I'll come to that in just a second. We can make them available. Um, we just need to check that uh, everything is shareable, but we will obviously make every, as much as possible available uh, after this session. Um, given the challenges presented by COVID, what marketing methods will be used to draw investment to the city? Um, that's one from Martin Johnson. Um, I think I'll pick up on this one initially. Uh, thanks, Martin. Um, obviously, we'll, you know, we've all got used to uh, much more of a virtual um, way of working and uh, using the digital technologies that are available to us. And I think obviously uh, we'll be capitalizing on those um, to reach out far and wide. Um, we obviously, as, as has already been discussed, want to make sure that as many local businesses um, and developers and construction companies, etc., are able to uh, get involved and, and take advantage of 
of the opportunities that are here. Um, as far as potentially capital investment uh, is concerned, then maybe we will be casting the net uh, further afield as well. Um, but uh, the being able to use these virtual technologies is obviously a fantastic way of doing that, um, using the uh, Department of International Trade Network, et cetera. Um, but I don't know, do any of our other uh, panelists wish to take on that question at all? Uh, Shailesh, I think you have your hand up there. Just unmute myself. Yes, I think that's a very good question. And I think it dovetails with what uh, Julie Green asked also, um, and I think it's particularly important that at the moment what you see is a lot of the big institutions, a lot of the big developers are sort of just holding back, uh, saying, well, you know, we're going to see how things develop. But of course, the local community know exactly what the scene is. They've been here, they've been operating here, and I think they're in a better position to take a com commercial decision than an outsider would. Uh, so I think it is very important that we do work with the local community. Uh, and uh, I think that that may, in the immediate future, uh, be the place we need to look at initially. Certainly for capital raising, that's another thing. But in terms of actual people who are going to get actively involved, uh, I think that uh, the local community would be very good. Can I also say that when um, somebody asks a question, I think it'd be helpful if they could say, uh, what company, what firm, whatever it is that, that they uh, represent, um, uh, just so that we get a bit more background as to the individual who's asking the question. Thank you. Mr. Hennessy, I don't know whether I could just add something that I said about uh, charging points. One of the things that the uh, uh, R&D centre that we're setting up in conjunction with the university is going to look at is battery technology, because uh, obviously that needs to be uh, improved uh, quite a bit. Uh, so I think we'll probably be one of the leaders in, in the country in that in the next couple of years. Yes, I think it's a fantastic opportunity for us, quite rightly. Uh, we, we have a um, an anonymous question, uh, so apologies, Shailesh, but I can't shed any more light on this one. Uh, a lot of people um, I speak to, this is their question, um, say these plans have been around for years. Why now? Uh, Mayor Palmer. Uh, the reason is it's very clear because we've got the opportunity to invest. That's uh, to me is the reason. And um, you know the government's investment into command authorities across uh, the UK was the first time really that I can remember central government truly understanding how investment into all parts of the country can see massive dividends in opportunity. And, uh, and we have a government now that are backing up uh, that investment, not just with investment from the command authority. But setting up things like a towns fund, the city centres fund, etc., uh, and also given the evidence base that we have through the Chemistry of Peterborough Independent Legal Review, as I mentioned earlier, backing us with our initial investment into the university with further funds. So it's it's a catalyst that I believe it started when we had met, we were enabled uh, by central government to invest into uh, into the centre of Peterborough and into the university, and I believe that that has created this, I call it, perfect storm earlier, but I believe that's what's happened here. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, over many, many years as an East Anglian boy, uh, been very frustrating that governments of neither colour that were saw sort of fit to invest in our great area, our great parts of the country. But that has changed. And uh, and what we would have said, we said what I said earlier, when government puts seed funding in, when government puts its money in, business follows. And that's exactly what we've, we are seeing happening here in Peterborough now. Thank you, Mayor Palmer. Um, very well said, I think. Um, would anyone else like to comment on uh, why now? Um, Tom, it's Paul Bristow here. Um, Look, just to, just to really just build upon what um, uh, what James said is we have you know this it, it's the investment that's coming from not only uh, central government but the combined authority that is unlocking the opportunity. So there's three reasons. It's when we talk about leveling up as politicians, um, that is just is not simply just a slogan. There is genuine vision to ensure that the benefits of of the south and uh, and, and London now uh, are able to, to go elsewhere. And it's Charlotte's job and my job as MPs to make sure that when we talk about 
uh, leveling up funding, when we talk about investment and focusing on particular places, it doesn't just go to the, the north of England and the Midlands, that it comes here in Peterborough. Uh, and that's what we are working together to achieve. So we've got that investment from the government. Uh, we've got that investment from the combined authority. I think, secondly, we've got that vision. I think we've got a combined vision between the city council, the combined authorities, and the MPs, which is, is unique. You know, policy, get 20 politicians in the room, they'll get 20 different opinions. But I think on this one, everyone's um, uniquely aligned about wanting to deliver this project. And, you know, thirdly, Peterborough is uniquely placed. Um, it's genuinely unique in terms of its location, its accessibility, its history, it's confident about who it is and what it is as a working city. And all of those factors make Peterborough particularly unique. And I think it, the, if the government wanted to point to a particular place and said, look, this is what levelling up means, then they, they could do a lot worse than Peterborough. So I think that's the reason why this, this is happening now. Fantastic. Thank you, Paul. Um, we have a question here from Toby Wood um, of this, well, of, uh, who I'm aware of, of the Civic Society, may have other hats as well. Um, Peterborough has a graceful, serene and beautiful river, um, yet we do, we've done little to develop it or its banks. How can those developing nearby be encouraged to contribute to make the river a destination in its own right? Steve, would you like to pick this one up? Yeah, I will do. Thanks, uh, Toby. Uh, really important sort of question, and uh, the, the river is clearly a fantastic asset to uh, to the city. I think we, I think it's fair to say, the Flint and Keys development has has delivered uh, against that, that objective. Um, but that's not to say there isn't more that we need to do. And uh, I talked about the, the embankment master plan uh, and what we need that master plan to do, working with uh, the football club and the university. Uh, and the combined authority is create a, a fresh vision for that part of uh, of the city, one that brings the embankment to life uh, and opens up the river in, in a way that I think Toby you're you're describing, uh, and I think that's a you know that's a, an asset there that we we need to to, to use uh, to, to greater effect and to promote it uh, not just to, to people who are visiting but, but importantly to, to residents within within the city. So we have the opportunity to do that. I think through this uh, this master plan, we will take that opportunity uh, and create a, a facility and facilities that open up the river uh, and increase its use. So, so it becomes, you know, a, an asset uh, not just in how it looks, but how it's used uh, for, for for the city. Mm. Council Holditch, have you anything to add on that? I'd just like to add. I'd the question you had, I think, from from Mr. Johnson, how, how do we know this is, is going to happen? Because we've talked about it for a long while. I think we've learned an awful lot from Flint and Keys and how to, as, as, as chair of the uh, Peterborough Investment Partnership, how to work uh, with, in partnership with, with, with others. Before, I think we tried to do it as a council, but then we have the we have the vision and we have the tools in which to, to, to make it happen. Uh, and, and trust me, it is going to happen. Uh, and there's a lot of excitement, not only in the council, but, but across the city. And I think from the amount of investors you've got, you've got today, there is uh, uh, excitement to, that will happen. We know how to work with, with others. We know how to work in partnership, whether it's combined authority or, or business itself. Uh, we're, we're here and open for business and we're going to make this happen together. Excellent, thank you very much. Um... We have a question here, I'm um, not quite sure who it's from, initial RBZ. There wasn't much emphasis in or input on the new stadium uh, for Peterborough United. Would it have been worth having someone from the football club to elaborate on that? Um, I think that, you know, it's, it's potentially a fair comment. I think it's at a, a reasonably early stage, although there are, you know, it's been very much talked about. Um, I think what we'd like to see is that this is the first of you know a series of events of this nature um and of this scale uh, looking at how the city is developing and some of these really exciting opportunities we've got for the city um to be able to track their development um so to bring you more information 
uh, at, at later events with regards to specific um, investment opportunities and investment sites and also the commercial aspects of some of those opportunities as they develop um, along the development stage. So uh, we would certainly look to get someone rep uh, representative from um, Peterborough United in future to talk about that as well as, as I say, others such as Station Quarter and University as, as they progress. Um, so certainly look forward to bringing you more on that next time. Um, We've got a question here from an anonymous attendee. With regards to the town's fund, uh, what are the smaller developments such as the visitor centres and not the flagship projects? So any further detail on some of the smaller projects rather than the larger ones there? Steve, are you able to share? Yeah, yeah. Th thanks, Tom. I mean, yes, it's it's an important part of the, the overall mix and, and the one of the schemes in the uh, in the bid uh, is to uh, is for a Bronze Age uh, themed extension to, to the museum in, in the city. And uh, again, I think a project that's uh, been been on the books for, for a while that will be um, enabled uh, all being well uh, if we hear next week from uh, from the uh, from the town's fund. Uh, and uh, we talk about the you know I've talked about and we all have about the scale of some of the growth uh, in homes and jobs around the city. Um, creating a, a place that people will want to come by choice, whether to as visitors or residents, means that we need within the city centre offer to have um, those attractions that, uh, that create uh, a number of, of places to, to visit. And that, that is one already uh, that people uh, want to go to, but we want to make it even better. Uh, and I think uh, the Bronze Age expansion, extension to, to the museum will, will create that. Uh, I mentioned the, 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 um, the cultural hub as well. Um, in the, the TK Maxx building as we know it. I think uh, while it's not uh, one of the smaller schemes, it will, by, by its development and the vision that, that we're sharing and, and working with community partners around for that, uh, will create an opportunity for, for cultural um, uh, partners to, to, to occupy space uh, in a more sustainable way and actually in a more collaborative way even than now uh, that uh, will create a destination that will be a visitor attraction in its own right. So there's a there's a number of schemes that we've got uh, in the Towns Fund bid uh, that I think we'll, we'll deliver against that objective. Great, thank you. Thank you, Steve. Um, we've got one question here from uh, Robert Douglas from Milton Estates, uh, who have land available for energy production. Um, Robert asks, uh, a major constraint to production of renewable energy is the inability to find economic connection points on the grid. Is any work being done with the network operators to overcome this blockage? Anyone particularly like to pick that one up? So I come in, Tom. Thank on you, that, Steve. I think the answer is the answer is yes. Uh, to make it succeed, we we have to enable uh, um, you know the function the functioning of of the grid and the capacity within it. Um, the Piri project, the Peterborough into Integrated Renewables Initiative project is, is one that will uh, kickstart uh, that for us and, and the discussions that we'll have with, um, uh, with providers. So it, it is, it is uh, the number of aspects to making that succeed that need to be done. And, and uh, Robert's highlighted one that we're very much aware of. Thank you, Steve. Um, and as opportunity, Peter, as well, we've been facilitating um, discussions between uh, UKPN, who are UK Power Network, the uh, operator in, in the area, uh, with local uh, developers, agents, um, chartered surveyors and, and landowners in order to help um, address some of the issues and constraints we have around power in the city. And we will be ensuring we continue those conversations um, as it's a vital part of, of the growth agenda. Um, got a question here from Ali Syed. Um, the plans for the university are an integral part of the upskilling of the city. Have these been in any way impacted by the disruption caused by COVID or are moving ahead as planned? Would be good if timelines could be shared. I wonder, Mayor Palmer, can we join, ask you to join in on this one? Yeah, so, um, so the answer is no. Uh, we haven't been disrupted by COVID. Uh, we are on target. Uh, uh, as I said earlier, to break the ground in November uh, on phase one of the university. It's slightly delayed from the initial October uh, start, but that's purely because the size of the building has been increased, uh, not because of any delays because of COVID. So uh, 
as I said, the, the work will begin. The schedule is clear to open uh, to students in 2022. Uh, and, uh, and as I mentioned earlier as well, phase two, uh, the, uh, the ambition is to break ground in March uh, and, uh, and that will open slightly after 2022. We're also, I failed to mention this earlier, we're also in discussions with government about funding for phase three as well. Uh, and the uh, university will, of course, create significant numbers of jobs, not just on its own footprint, but because of the research and development hub that phase two will be, it will create significant numbers of jobs into the local economy. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just looking to see what else we have here. Um, we have a question from Warren Pope. Um, with Peterborough set to be the lead in EV charging and battery development, is it possible that we can encourage uh, electric vehicle manufacturers to the city to make affordable vehicles? Um, speaking on behalf of Opportunity Peterborough and, and having responsibility for promotion of the city and targeting companies uh, to come to the city, I think that is uh, a fantastic suggestion and absolutely um, we are looking to target uh, that type of business uh, to come to the city. It's all part of the uh, sustainable agenda and building on the strengths that we'll get um, not only from the, the projects that have already taken place uh, in the city, but as has been discussed today, is the investment that is yet to come. Um, and we also have uh, you know, a, a, an incredible supply chain within the city and locally as well that would, that would absolutely feed into and benefit from uh, that kind of investment in the city uh, and land available to accommodate it. So uh, does, would anyone else on the panel have any comments on that at all? That's fine. One for opportunity, Peter, brother, I think. Um, I have a question here, uh, or a suggestion uh, from Ian Forsyth. Will Opportunity Peterborough provide local partner suggestions so the growth capital spend can be retained locally, perhaps at A to Z, starting with those attending today? Uh, absolutely, Ian. I'm very happy to take that uh, suggestion on board. Uh, I think the more that um, we can retain spend locally, uh, local economy, businesses and residents can benefit from this investment, uh, the better. Um, and we'll absolutely take that on board. Thank you very much. Okay, um, question from David Turnick. Um, Steve Cox may have covered it in his presentation, but how does the recent city fiber infrastructure to create super fast broadband compare to what other competing cities are doing? Uh, so I'll, I'll pick that up. Um, don't know precisely, uh, but my uh, my uh, sort of instinct and I think evidence suggests we're, we're well ahead of competing cities when it comes to city fiber infrastructure. We've been working with City Fibre and others uh, in recent years um, to get uh, that installed. Uh, and I think uh, from talking to other uh, colleagues in other cities, I think they're, they're playing catch up uh, with us, which doesn't mean to say we can rest on our laurels. Uh, I think there's more, even more that we can, we can do and will do. But to answer the question, I think we're, we're doing very well when comp compared to other cities. Yeah, absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more. We're, um, we're one of the first cities to actually um, invest in the kind of citywide uh, gigabit infrastructure. Um, and that has certainly paid dividends um, through our engagement with businesses. We've been able to uh, encourage and uh, attract businesses to the city, uh, not only through the actual infrastructure that's going in and the, the um uh, the benefits that brings to the businesses, but also as a demonstration of the ambition of the city and the direction of travel. Um, I think that's something that's been uh, an attraction to investors as well. Um, so we have Ashley Dunsheath, um, who uh, some may know of uh, LDA, but I believe is now over at Arab. Apologies if I've got that wrong, Ashley. Um, how confident is Peterborough City Council of securing the majority of funding via the Towns Fund bid? And what happens to the five priorities if the city is unsuccessful? I guess that's one for you initially, Steve, again. Sorry to throw that one over to you. Uh, always difficult to be precise, but I'd like to say very confident. Um, you know, uh, I'll happy to be proved to be wrong, but uh, 
I think the, uh, the accelerated funding we, we secured uh, last, last month from, from government on, under the Towns Fund banner is an indication of the confidence they have in the city. I think our investment plan was a, was a very strong one, well put together uh, with some exciting schemes in it and, and well supported. Um, so I'm, I'm uh, never going to say 100%, but I'm not, uh, not far off that. We'll just have to wait and see uh, what, uh, what comes, back, comes back from, from government. And on the second part of the question, um, you know, we'll see, we'll see the terms of, uh, of, the, uh, of the letter and the, uh, the communication from government about you know, how uh, they see uh, the investment plan and any steers they have about what they, they would like to see brought forward. Uh, so I think on the second part of the question, we'll wait to see uh, what, uh, what comes back from government to decide uh, which of the priorities uh, they are backing, uh, if not all of them, uh, to, uh, to see delivered. And apologies, actually, of course, WSP, not Arup. My apologies. Um, that was off the bottom of my screen there. Um, we've got uh, just a, another comment there, I think, from, from a same question earlier with regards to getting someone from the football stadium um, presenting in future uh, or having their own slide. Absolutely. And um, we have uh, Martin Johnson, who works very closely with um, Randy and Jason from <coughs> United. Um, and offering that they would be available for uh, an after afternoon session at some point in the future. As I say, we, we'd love to get uh, more more detail on some of these specific projects in the future and, and run these events as a series of events. So hopefully that one answers uh, the question. Through um, the chat channel, we've got a couple of questions here. Um, are you able to share any more detail on the intent of the middle homeland? Will it be a marina based residential? We're, we're doing some work at the moment on, on that to just to understand the uh, condition of the land. Um, I think it's allocated uh, in the local plan for development. Um, housing could well be a preferred use uh, for that site. But again, we need to, to see the, the, uh, the outcomes from the embankment master planning work uh, that will also guide how we think that site can best, best be used. But it's, uh, as we've mentioned before, it's, a, it's another valuable uh, development opportunity, an asset within the city centre, although on, on the edges, but importantly connected to. Uh, so uh, you know, that's, that's where we are currently with the Middle Home site. Thank you, Steve. Um, and from uh, Peter Freilish as well, uh, to coin a phrase of John Holditch, his legacy is to see cranes over the landscape of Peterborough. You have a room full of investors today, could you give more information of assets and land that is available for investment for both house building and industry? Is that one for John or for Steve initially, do we think? For Councillor Holditch, apologies, or for Steve? Yes, that's very, very true. I mean, I, I, I keep trotting this out. There's some European uh, commissioners came to Peterborough uh, uh, and it was just after the three day week when we'd switched some of the uh, street lights off. We only had one and three on. Uh, and he said, is your, is your city finished or, or dead? I said, why? He said, well, you're not maintaining your street lights. So it looks as if it's dead. And also you, you need to get some cranes on the horizon, which sends confidence out to, to people that things are happening. Uh, and, and, and that's absolutely true. I told that to my leader at the time. He said, we better go and hire some. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there, there, are, uh, there are opportunities about, uh, uh, and I'm sure that if he works with uh, the, the planning authority in Opportunity Peterborough, uh, we, we can point him in the right direction. And can I just say on the marina thing, that's always been an ambition of ours to put a marina uh, uh, at the middle home site there, but it's made up ground. And it means that you would have to take the rubbish that's underneath it away. And the cost of that, when we first looked at it, would be prohibitive. But now we've got our own uh, waste to energy plant. That might be a possibility. Thank you, Councillor Hordich. Um, Steve, do you have anything more on, on specifics of available land for uh, house building and industry or the general principle of? I think it's something we, we can um, we can come back to. I think we've spoken about a number of sites, not all in obviously council ownership, uh, of course, and uh, quite a few in private ownership. But I think as we bring forward the master plan around the station quarter, uh, potentially Northwest Gate and, uh, and, and other parts around the city centre, there will be opportunities that, that, that emerge uh, to, uh, to, to, to see development happen. Northminster is another 
Um, so th there are there are opportunities. I think, as was mentioned earlier, the dialogue needs to continue. Uh, we need to have more of these events, and as we go through and develop the plans, um, you know, in addition to what's already. I mean, there are cranes swinging at the moment. We need we need more. Uh, but as, as the plans evolve, the, the embankment master plan, the station quarter that we referred to, that the opportunities will arise uh, through that. So maintaining the dialogue uh, will, will, will ensure that people are, are aware of that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I think it's important to say whilst the focus of the event today is absolutely on this, um, you know, huge uh, ambition for the city centre, uh, much needed investment, and a, which will be a real catalyst for growth for the city and as a statement of the ambition that um, at the same time, there are absolutely uh, development uh, opportunities coming forward um, around the periphery of the city, around the uh, more traditional business and um, industrial parks uh, that we have uh, for logistics and manufacturing and office space. Uh, talking to a number of developers and landowners at the moment about some really uh, potentially exciting opportunities. Uh, of course, Council Holditch and myself were down for the groundbreaking of the McCormack facility uh, on the Gateway site just a couple of weeks ago. Um, but as Steve says, not all of these are in council ownership. Um, you know, some of these are, are private land, but uh, uh, represent uh, fantastic investment opportunities nonetheless. And the continued confidence in Peterborough um, that, that businesses and investors have. I think we should say, Tom, that also we need to look at how the city centre is going to look in the future. We need to get a lot more people living in, in, in the centre to support uh, the, the, the shops and whatever have you. But we need to, to look at it. And if you look at Bridge Street, we've already started that. That, that flagship thing in the old Woolworth building, is, uh, I, I, I know it, uh, is, a, is a start of attracting people in, into the city centre. Because if Mrs Carrington was on here today, she would tell you what's going to go into that. Into that. That building because it's absolutely amazing what we want to do with it but you've got uh, you know cross keys homes you've got the work and pensions people in there you've got the uh, 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 uh the, the city council's offices are in there and all that ever so we need to get people into the city center uh, and and that's what we're looking at and i'm going to set up a working group very shortly uh, a cross-party working group to look at the city center should uh, look in the future Thank you, Councillor Holditch. Absolutely. And I think we heard earlier within the presentations that the, the bounce back on Peterborough's High Street has been um, uh, really quite incredible compared to the national and regional averages. Uh, I think there's a certain amount of confidence um, within the city, and, and that's partly inspired by the, the lovely open spaces that we have in the city and the people's ability to move around freely and to access the city centre. Um, but absolutely, people living within the city centre is is always going to be able to drive further spend and investment and, and create that vibrant uh, city centre culture and that's absolutely what we want to see more of in the city. Um, and, you, and we must we must add to that that the uh, the support we've had from the combined authority and the mayor in particular to reopen our city centre has been fantastic mm -hmm. uh, and only at the last uh, combined authority meeting the combined authority have made eight hundred thousand pounds available and which the city council has got to put some in as well uh, to 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 make uh, re regenerate our city centre further so thank you for the combined authority indeed indeed um, we have uh, one final question at the moment, unless any others come through in the meantime. Um, and this might be a point to bring you in, actually, Mayor Palmer. Uh, with all these plans for growth, do we need to develop and invest in better roads, transport, transport infrastructure uh, to handle the increase in homes and businesses, etc.? Uh, the simple answer is yes. And, and the reason the people are has been such a success uh, over the last 50 years is because that's exactly what happened when Peterborough Newtown was developed. Uh, the parkways were put in and, and created uh, cycle routes around the city and, and ultimately uh, has allowed the city to grow into what it's become. So whilst we are very, very excited about these hundreds of millions of pounds of investment into our, uh, into our city, we need, we are, our eyes are wide open as to uh, what we must do to improve the transport network around the city of Peterborough. Clearly, in the short term, there will be some junction improvements that have come right across is helping to fund, uh, and we're working closely with Peterborough City Council on those, and they will enable the university to be built, for example, that kind of thing. But as I said earlier, uh, we are in talks with the City Council about potential routes for Cam Metro, 
uh, Cam Metro is a Cambridge only scheme. It is a Cambridgeshire transport solution. Uh, and, uh, and clearly we have to look to future technology and we have to look to future opportunities to improve uh, what is on offer within the city itself and around the city, linking in the communities uh, that feed into Peterborough. Added to that, in the short term, uh, we have got a bus service that has been uh, completely and utterly annihilated by um, COVID-19, but it does give us a, an opportunity to, to look at the solution and we're working on delivering a franchise system uh, into Cambridgeshire to, uh, to alleviate the, the short-term problems, but also enable us uh, to put forward a better and more comprehensive system uh, post uh, May of next year. So there's a lot going on in the short term, and there is also a long-term view. Fantastic, thank you, Mayor. Um, would any of our other panelists like to comment on that at all? We do have a few more questions coming through now and again as well. Yes, can I just come in briefly, Tom, on that? Yes. Um, and can I just say that we are now in an extraordinarily fortunate position compared to before, that we do have Mayor Palmer uh, on board in terms of dealing with a much bigger picture. Uh, whereas in the past, as, as John, Councillor John Holich uh, alluded and said, you know, it was the city council that was trying to do things. Uh, but now we can work in the local scenario, but also we're able to think in a bigger way and work with Mayor Palmer, who has a huge remit. And that way we can get the infrastructure right from the start, rather than doing something at local scale, finding in 10 years time, 15 years time, that actually with the benefit of hindsight, we could have done it different. So um, I very much hope that people, when they're thinking of doing their projects and expansions, uh, will make use of Mayor Palmer's office, uh, because that can only be to our benefit. And, and that adds to the wider team of people who are trying to make this city so successful. Uh, as I mentioned earlier on, we've got the council, we've got Option Peterborough, the MPs, and a whole lot of other people, but it's important to also factor in uh, Mayor Palmer, uh, who, who can be helpful, not only in terms of strategic planning, uh, but also in terms of funding and finance and helping to lobby government to get that all important money coming locally. Thank you very much, Arnish. Um We've got a question here from Mike Green. Um, many of you people will know, local entrepreneur, investor and developer. Um, if Councillor Holditch is looking to have a cross-party group to determine the city centre look and culture, could he include some local developers in that group or committee? Oh, I wonder if John has, has left us. I think he may have done. I know he did. I'm happy to pick that up with Councillor Holditch if that's uh, if that's helpful. Thank you very much, Steve. Appreciate it. Um, got one here. Uh, with the Peterborough construction framework ended, how will you ensure council-led schemes are procured with local contractors? Uh, I think we covered off a bit of that earlier, Steve, but I don't know whether you're able to uh, elaborate on that at all. Um, I, I think there's something to, to take away. I think there's... Uh, you know, this is an important outcome uh, in terms of securing, you know, the right sort of development and, and the passion behind it. I think awareness raising is, is really important uh, early on what's coming through, but so it's something I'll, I'll, I'll take away as well and, uh, and perhaps come back with a bit more detail on. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and I, I think it should be said, you know, whilst we're, uh, you know, I made comments earlier about ca casting the net wide, that, the, 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 main cohort that's been uh, made aware and invited to take part in, in today's event is absolutely uh, from that from those uh, kind of local businesses local developers and investors in the main as well as other friends of Peterborough those that have uh, worked with us or, or showed um, um, you know a degree of interest in the past so we're st certainly starting uh, with those um, from the from the local network and existing network um, David Turnock uh, from uh, DT Architects. Um, I appreciate the seminar is, uh, sorry, the seminar is targeted at city center regeneration, but the established employment areas in the city, especially adjacent to the A1 are being developed and upgraded. Would it help to outline projected employment growth in the city over the next 20 years? Um, 
certainly would. Um, I am just trying to think of the number off the top of my head, and it, it escapes me at the moment. I, I, I think according to the local plan, it might be around 16,000 jobs. But obviously earlier we heard that we were averaging job creation of around 3,000 or so a year. Um, I guess you've got to look at that, whether it's net or gross, really. Um, Steve, do, do you have any figures in to hand um, with regards to local plan and the ambitions there? Uh, not on uh, not on jobs, um, but I know we know the thousand uh, housing units uh, a year will continue to be uh, the ambition and the target for, for, for housing growth. And we need to obviously then match uh, housing growth with job growth. So the two will be aligned. So I, I suspect uh, around the figures you mentioned, Tom, is, is about right. Sixteen thousand homes. Um, but, you know, it's it's about the type of jobs, not just the number uh, and making sure we've got the high quality jobs. Uh, for for, for uh, that uh, connect into the sectors that we have already within the city uh, and that uh, jobs through skills programs that local people can access and the university is going to be an important part of that mix as well absolutely um Got a question from uh, Mark McVicker. We wish to connect and engage with local businesses to explore opportunities for them with NWG. Uh, can you recommend the best route or organisation to facilitate that? Um, well, I'd like to uh, offer our own services there, uh, Mark. Opportunity Peter, as I said, we are the economic development for the com uh, economic development company for the city. Um, so we, that's absolutely our, our raison d'etre. We're a, a private, not-for-profit business wholly owned by Peterborough City Council. Uh, and our, our pure reason for being is to, to make those connections um, and, and support the, the economic growth and prosperity of the city. Um, I think in the first instance, um, as an email address, uh, I'd go for info at opportunitypeterborough.co.uk all one word um, obviously you can find us online and through social media as well um, and we'll be sharing as I say uh, content and slide from this session afterwards so we will make sure we circulate again our contact details to anybody um, who wishes to get in touch that way uh, we've got a question from um, Spencer Wrench um, again local investor and developer uh, could should we as a city look to develop a landmark iconic building visible from the A1 road and passing trains? Um, I think in Councillor Holdridge's absence, Steve, may I come back to you and potentially bring in uh, Paul Bristow as well on this one. Yeah, thanks, Tom. I wonder whether Paul or Shailash want, want to comment on that. And um, from, 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 from my perspective, and I don't know whether it will be John's view, I think that's a... That's, uh, uh, I think a, an excellent idea. Uh, I think in, in putting people on the map and taking advantage of the fact we, we, we have uh, thousands of people an hour passing through uh, the, uh, the city or passing by the city, uh, we could make a real statement uh, with a, a landmark um, um, uh, building or landmark uh, structure. So uh, something I think to, to, to take away and, uh, and think further, further around. Thank you. Paul, um, do you have any thoughts on the suggestion? Uh, th thanks, Tom. Um, well, obviously, the, the trains run through the city centre, so I, I, would, I would rather hope as they come through the city centre, they'll be able to see uh, some of the work that we're talking about now, and, and that indeed would, would be inspiring. Um, you know, as for the A1, um, I think it's an interesting idea. It's got to be led, though, and um, you know, I don't, we don't want to, uh, you know... Uh, what's the word really white elephant or something like that um that you know kind of but you know if it's if it's there in a in a um in an area that of economic activity you know regeneration i think it would be it would be a jolly good idea but it, it needs to be thought through um but in terms of trains coming through the city center i can't think of anything more inspiring uh, than uh, seeing all this work we're talking about now and, and that would be iconic for our city can I just come in on that? Um, uh, I think uh, it's a very good idea and it's just a, uh, a concept of developing what an iconic building would be and trying to find uh, the relevant investor to be able to uh, come up with the money, the idea and the feasibility plans. Uh, but I think that it would be great, you know, we have a lot going for Peterborough already, but to have some iconic building uh, can only add uh, to the development of, of the greater picture of, of people. Yes, I, I'm in favour of it. 
And I think um, I'm, I think there's a a good developer could come up with a could come up with a scheme that'd be good. Perhaps it could be um, uh, the developer asked the question <laughs> might be able to um, inspire us with uh, uh, with what what sort of thing he, he has in mind. But it'd be a, it'd be a good idea, yeah. I think we have some com some competing views as well uh, coming through on the Q and A, um, uh, with some suggesting it'll be the uh, the new football stadium, and others uh, obviously suggesting that we already have a landmark building uh, in the form of our uh, eight hundred year old cathedral. Um, thank you very much. It looks as if we have currently come to the end of uh, questions. Um, so I don't know if any of our panelists have any final remarks that they'd like to make. Yes, can I just come in? Am I? Yes, please do, Charlotte. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm usually... Um, I just wanted to say that, you know, I've been a member of Parliament for just over 15 years locally. And I go back to one of the questions that was asked about somebody saying these plans have been around for a very long time. Uh, why now? Um, and certainly when I became the Member of Parliament, I saw the plans. But with any major development of this sort, people are always going to be hesitant unless somebody takes the initiative. And we've had people taking that initiative. Fletton Keys, which is in my patch, um, is a wonderful example of what is now possible. That wasn't there a long time, uh, 15 years ago, but we've seen the potential. And I very much hope that other people will say, actually, something is happening here and I want to be part of it. When you get hotel chains like the Hilton deciding to come to Peterborough, we need to acknowledge that these people do their research very, very thoroughly. They're a global company, they're a successful company, and they don't just go into any town or any city. They go where they feel there is potential. And then there is actually a domino effect. And I very much hope that those initial concerns and initial, in those initial worries will now be a lot less than perhaps when these plans first came on to the surface. We have plans, they are gradually uh, seeing fruition, but when you're talking about something as major as this, it isn't going to happen in just two or three years. It does take time and we've started that process. It's for us to determine now how fast that goes. And I would simply conclude by saying that I, for one, am very much in favor of local developers, local entrepreneurs being active locally. Uh, this is their community, and it'd be great if they could take a part in its growth. And so that way they can prosper as can the local community. Um, I just want to conclude also by saying thank you very much for hosting this option in Peterborough uh, today. Uh, it's been very successful. I've certainly found it helpful. And I very much hope that all your participants uh, will also take away something positive from today's event. So thank you again, Tom. Thank you, Charlotte. Uh, similarly, can I just say, say something? As, you know, we're, we're politicians, so we always want to kind of say something <laughs> um, at the end. But uh, I talk about my city all the time, and um, it's my favourite subject, as I, I say. Um, quite a lot but you know now is Peterborough's time we've got the the transport infrastructure and the accessibility for our city centre we've got our university coming which is going to as I say specialise in the right subjects for a working city science technology engineering manufacturing we've got a bustling um, uh, retail and hospitality sector Cathedral Square and Queensgate are marvellous attributes for this city and I think many many cities would you know, give their right arm for the, the sort of footfall we get through in our city centre. We've got a hard-working population and that now combined with the Peterborough's unique location and this vision that we have really make, means that Peterborough's time is now and I do genuinely believe that we will look at this time, you know, this year and say this is the time that Peterborough turned a corner to become the confident city uh, that it should be, you know, confident in itself, confident about its future uh, and um, and with all the investment and resources associated with that. So now is the time to get involved and now is the time to back Peterborough. Thank you very much, Paul. If I may, just to come in behind uh, the two of these, I'd just like to thank 
uh, you putting this on. And uh, I think it's been a really good discussion. Uh, and I'll again say to those people who have been taking part and asking the questions, uh, the time is now. Come and talk to us. We want to invest and uh, make this city uh, uh, you know, live up to the potential it has. And uh, I think you know, you've got two great MPs. We're trying to work over a wider area. We want to work alongside you. Uh, and, uh, and we can make uh, the transformations that, that are potentially there. So thank you all. Thank you, Mayor Palmer. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> well, um, I think it's been a fantastic event today. Uh, I hope all of you that are, are watching um, are, agree with us and have found it uh, a useful uh, and informative and hopefully uh, inspiring series of um, talks there. Uh, and presentations, um, and certainly uh, a very engaging Q and A session as well, which is always good to see. Um, I'd personally uh, like to thank all of the panelists here today: uh, Councillor Holditch uh, for joining us, Mayor Palmer, um, Paul Bristow, and, and Shaila Shvara, our uh, fantastic members of Parliament representing us um, in uh, government. Um, and of course, Steve Cox as well uh, for everything that he's been able to share with us uh, today. Um, it's you know it's a distinguished panel, uh, and I think bringing everyone here today again shows that uh, level of teamwork that we have, uh, the level of uh, commitment both at the kind of the the political um, and the uh, officer and civic level uh, locally. Um, what we've heard about today is the amount of pride that people have in city, the, the passion they have uh, for the city as it is, but also uh, the vision of, of what is to come uh, and the confidence in the city as well uh, about our, our past and existing investment in the city. Uh, and again, those future plans um, that are supported um, and being championed at the local level, at the regional level and at the national level as well. Um, it's been mentioned that obviously we're in testing times at the moment as far as the economy is concerned, but they, they won't last forever. And in fact, you know, in times of adversity, we do also have fantastic opportunities as well to think about how we might plan and do things differently uh, to accommodate, um, you know, the requirements of businesses uh, and residents in the future and make sure that what we're building for them is fit for purpose, is that high quality environment uh, that we're looking to provide for them, uh, that those for them to be able to live fantastic lives and flourish uh, and grow. Um, we've heard about the city's diverse sectors, uh, you know, that it's a high growth city, um, but also, you know, uh, that it's very well connected um, and that we look to build on all of that uh, for the future. Um, so yes, um, building on all of that, I think, as has been said, the time is now. Uh, as Mayor Palmer said earlier, there is a perfect storm. Um, we're taking an approach uh, between all the partners here in the city uh, to really drive forward these opportunities that, as I've said before, will be a, a massive catalyst for growth and regeneration uh, for the city centre, but for the city as a whole uh, and for the wider region. Uh, we'd really encourage everybody who's on the call, who's interested in getting involved, uh, to contact us. We will be sharing as much of the information that we've shared on this uh, event uh, afterwards. Uh, and also you'll be able to contact us at Opportunity Peter, but we'll be able to make the necessary connections for you. Um, and hopefully this will be the first of many of events of this caliber and of this nature, uh, bringing you updates uh, from the city uh, as to what our plans are and how they're progressing and, and how you can get involved and benefit from that. Um, but again, I'd just like to thank all of our speakers here today uh, for your contributions and for your time. Um, I think it's a really exciting opportunity and time for the city. Uh, and it's really pleasing to see everybody here um, expressing their, their passion and excitement for that. Um, but I think uh, we will leave it there for today. Um, it's been an amazing event uh, as far as I'm concerned. Again, thank you for all the panelists and for all of you uh, at home or within your offices watching this. Um, we look forward to seeing you again at the next event and who knows, maybe we can do it in person next time. Uh, here's hoping, but if not, uh, then we'll see you back here. Uh, but thank you very much and goodbye. Thank you.